Hi, so um, it's Sunday the 2nd of April, and um, this morning was the Australian GP. And uh, yes, by the way, I am recording this in English, um, and my previous podcasts have been in French, but I do watch Formula One in English, so it's easier for me to talk about it in, in English. So it's what you get, okay? Um, so yeah, I am recording this podcast because... Um, the Australian GP was pretty crazy towards the end, and, um, I did want to, like, go through everything that happened and figure out my thoughts and my takes on, on all that happened. I am sorry, by the way, I don't have much time to record this, and my sister is having her birthday party, so it's very noisy out there, and I'm trying to, uh, quickly record this before everyone, like, gets in, because there's gonna be, like, 10 kids here so it's gonna be very noisy it's what you're gonna get okay so anyways um let's just go through this quick explanation of the last two laps and what happened um so that hopefully we understand it better so on lap 53 and like 54 we had first happen leading the race he was 8.3 35 seconds clear off of Hamilton, so no danger at all from that. Then um, in third position, we had Alonso, and then for fourth, we had kind of a battle um, between Sainz, Gasly, Stroll, and Perez. And then in um, eighth place, we had Norris, then Olkenberg, Ocon, Piastri, Joe, Sonoda, Magnussen, Botas, Sargent, and De Vries. And then... Um, on lap 54, Magnussen nicked the wall at turn four and his right rear um, tire exploded. So his car stopped on the outskirts of the, of the track, so not on, tr on the track, but then his tire that like exploded, that popped off the car, um, was still on the track. Um, at that point, so as I was saying before, there was a fight for fourth. Um, but it was kind of winding down because I think probably everyone was on, like, the tire management strategy. So um, that was why, like, you know, things were winding down. Everyone was, like, kind of settling into their spots. Um, but, yeah, then Magnuson nicked the wall. And um, since, you know, there was kind of a lot of debris on track and his car was, like, not directly on track, but, you know, still not in a safe place, um... There was, in lap 54, the safety car, but then on lap 55, they called in the red flag. Um, can you even say called in the red flag? Anyways, they waved the red flag, and um, everyone was then back, on, back in the pits, and everyone, of course, put in the soft, the soft tire, because they were, like, you know, going back to racing, so he, they needed, like, new tires. Anyways... So on lap 56, there was the standing start. They had two laps to go. So first of all, Max, he did seem a little bit in front of his grid box. Um, but after reviewing the footage, it was concluded that his tires were still touching the line. So it was fine. No penalty. Then uh, to keep with Max, he did have a good start. He was fast. No problem with that. Max went for the inside line of the turn, which is the preferred line to get into that turn. And Hamilton was right behind him, um, taking the same line. Alonso was um, to his left, so he took the outside of the turn to try to overtake Max. Um, Sainz had the inside line too, but he was slightly even more in the inside than Max. So that's for the first four drivers. Then um, we had Gasly. So Gasly, he had a better start than Sainz. He started faster. So he did overtake Sainz, but then he locked up his tires. So um, he didn't turn when going into the turn. He went, st he went straight forward, but he did manage to avoid the gravel because um, there's this like little patch of grass. So he rolled on the, the, gla the glass. <laughs> he rolled on the grass. Then Perez, who was behind Gasly, was right at his tail and he couldn't like turn and avoid Gasly, so he went on on the grass with him. Um 
and behind them was troll. I'm trying to like say everything that I wrote down because it's very messy. As I was saying, Perez had to follow Gasly and like go outside of the track, but he couldn't avoid the gravel. So he went on the gravel. Um, and before I get into like the actual chaos, I just wanted to like get it over with with Hamilton and Max because they both went through turn one and they went on they went on safely and resumed the race completely normally. But then back to Gasly, Perez, and all of that. So Gasly is on the grass, Perez in the gravel, and we have signs on the racing track. He hit the rear right of Alonso, so the, the back tire on the right, and that made Alonso spin, which gave space to Stroll to keep going forward and signs to follow. So now we have Alonso who spun, so his... So he's losing places, and Sainz and, and Stroll can keep moving forward. At the same time, we have Sargent, who's last. Um, he hit De Vries, and they both went off at turn one and stopped in the gravel. So with them, it's like over. And right after, we have Norris and Olkenberg. They go through, and behind them, we have Ocon and Tsunoda. They're side by side. And uh, Tsunoda is slightly pushing Ocon on the border of the track. He's not outside of the track. He's still on the track. But he's, like, on the far um, left of the track. Piastri, Botas, and Joe, they follow behind safely. Like, they're fine. Gasly rejoins the track. Uh, and when he rejoins the track, Olkenberg and Norris make a slight contact which Gasly has to slow down a little to avoid. So at the same time, Olkenberg and Norris are making contact. Ocon moves to the middle of the track, which was his racing line. He was, like, driving normally. Gasly is moving in the same direction, so towards the middle of the track. So then Ocon touches the rear left of Gasly, and they both crash into the wall. Now it's, like, <laughs> done and over with with um, turn one and two. So now we have Gasly and Ocon, um, they're out. Logan and De Vries are out, but Piastri, Stroll, Botas, Joe, all of those people are fine. But then at turn three, we have Stroll. He locks up the front and he goes straight into the gravel and that makes him fall back down to last, but he can keep on going on, you know? And Alonso, same. Alonso um, was last after the spin, but he kept going, and um, so now Stroll goes to the gravel, but he can't, he manages to get back on track, so that's fine. So now, at this point, we have Max Verstappen, who's first, Hamilton, Sainz, Alkenberg, who's fourth, um, but you do know the curse the the Ulk curse he doesn't finish on the podium of course so then on fifth we have Norris then Tsunoda Piastri Joe Botas Perez Alonso and Stroll and all of this ruckus caused another red flag of course um, but before I go in and explain that third flag of the day let's conclude on the crashes so first we have Sainz and Alonso so Sainz took Alonso out, but to be fair, I don't see how he could have avoided it because he was already on the throttle, but yeah, I, I, I get the five-second penalty. Then for Sargent and De Vries, Logan was overtaken by De Vries, like at the beginning, at the restart, he was overtaken by De Vries, and um, Nick chose the outside line of the corner, and Logan... Um, didn't move to the inside. He kept on going straight, like straight forward. And then he didn't slow down because he locked up the front. So he drove into the back of the Vries. And um, to be honest, I don't know why he didn't get a penalty since I, since Sainz got one for the same type of mistake. Um, so yeah, I can't really say why this is not a penalty and Sainz's was, but I don't know. And then for Gasly and Ocon, um, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm not gonna lie, this one hurts, 
because I'm a fan of Gasly, and he was doing so good. Like, he was on track to gain a couple of points, but he did lock up um, going into turn one, so that's on him. But then he did manage to rejoin, which was nice, but yeah, sadly, Ocon was there at the same time. There was contact, which is really annoying, but it's definitely a racing incident. I looked at every onboard that I had, which were all of them because I have F F1 TV, but I did look at all of the onboards. Um, I looked at the like what the commentators were saying and all of that, and it is a racing incident. It's an untimely one since, you know, there could have been big points on the line for Alpine, but it is what it is. But <laughs> that race is a big question for me. Is this the thing, you know, like the last straw that's going to shift, like make the their relationship shift? I don't know. It might be. But yeah, I don't know. Hopefully not. So yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm recording this at 1400 hours on Sunday. And the race ended more than five hours ago. Uh, no more than four hours ago, and uh, we still don't have an answer regarding the summons of Gasly and Ocon, because they were both summoned at the end of the race, to talk about, um, and I quote, an alleged breach of Appendix L, Chapter 4, Article 2D of the International Sporting Code. So I looked it up, and um, what that article says is that causing a collision repetition of serious mistakes or the appearance of a lack of control over the car such as leaving the track will be reported to the stewards and may entail the imposition of penalties up to and including the exclusion of any driver concerned so this is important because if ghastly um gets you know penalty points he's at 10 and as i was saying at 12 it's a race ban so, yeah, let's hope he doesn't get banned. Hi, so um, it's me from editing, and I come back to you just to say that it was finally decided, we finally had a decision on the summons of Gasly and Ocon. So, uh, no further action was required for car 10 and 31, so Gasly and Ocon, because both cars recognized and accepted the incidents as a racing one. So voila, we now have our answer. So now, this is where the mess happens. Um, we're on lap 58 out of 58. So there's one lap left. Um, the stewards need to choose whether they will um, have a standing start, like one on, on the grid, or a rolling start between the behind the safety car, sorry. Um, but what is interesting to note is that they also have to decide whether to keep the classification as it is. So um, the classification was Verstappen, Hamilton, Sainz, Olkenberg, Tenoda, Norris, Piastri, Joe, Bottas, Perez, Alonso, Stroll. Or if they want to reorder to follow the positions that they were in before. This question was posed because not every car was through the first sector. Um, Logan Sargent, like, had not concluded the first sector, so, and, like, a lot of others, like, the Vries and stuff, they weren't through the first sector, so, so technically, you can't go on, because that lap has to get deleted, and, like, redone, as happened in Silverstone in 2021, I don't know if you remember, but it's the same thing. Or there's like a third option, which is that they could have also stopped the race and not finished the last lap. But alas, we had a rolling start with a reordering of the field, um, which, by the way, is completely by the books. I cannot find the article for the life of me. I did look, but I didn't want to like have to reread the entire the entirety of the book, so I didn't. But they did restart with this order which is al almost the finishing order but they restarted with max in first then second lewis third alonso fourth Sainz, fifth stroll sixth perez seventh norris eighth the Olk, ninth piastri tenth guan yu 11th yuki 12th valtteri bottas
at the end, Carlos had his five second penalty, so he did drop down to ten to twelfth. Sorry. So that concluded the two laps, <laughs> and um, I just finished recording this, and I'm thirty minutes in. So hopefully I can cut down on this because yeah. Um, but it was pretty chaotic, and my heart it hurt like having to watch the um, the interviews with Gasly and Science it was so sad like literally so sad i'm so mad because yeah being a Gasly fan is not that pretty i'm not going to lie my little heart hurts a lot of the time hopefully everything was clear i did try to like make this as simple as i could it wasn't a, a simple two laps so yeah thanks for listening Bye.